I would like to uh, present uh, some kind of, uh, let's say, lessons learned uh, and experiences from our project Be Rural. Uh, we are working uh, in different projects uh, with uh, regional communities on the bioeconomy and uh, on uh, developing bio-based uh, business models. Maybe very quickly, um, my institute, the Ecologic Institute, is a non-for-profit think tank. And uh, in our institute, yeah, bioeconomy is one of the cross-cutting teams we are focusing on. Uh, we have, let's say, two, um, two uh, foci uh, on the topic, and I will also come back to this during my discussion, uh, during my, my yeah, short introduction. One is on, uh, yes, let's say, the environmental and sustainability risk uh, of a European bioeconomy, and the other one is um, on stakeholder engagement and co-creation um, to implement um, bio-based solutions um, in regional communities. These are the three projects we coordinated already during the last years within EU uh, yeah, research uh, funding streams. Uh, you can see Bureau is one of them. I will also touch upon uh, of uh, some of the results or and experiences um, within the other uh, projects, Biostep and uh, Scale Up. Um, and with this, um, yeah, I would uh, like to um, uh, introduce a little bit um, what we see as uh, really the, let's say, um, opportunities and also uh, benefits of uh, bio-based business models. Uh, we have developed this list in our scale-up project, but nevertheless, it's based on the experiences uh, of our uh, work in, yeah, let's say, um, across the, the last uh, uh, more or less 10 years, which we are working in on the topic with different uh, regional communities. And I think uh, one point uh, I would like to mention first is really that we see it has a very, uh, yeah, or it can promote really added value uh, on regional uh, value chains, rural communities across a number of uh, different um, uh, regional actors within, um, yeah, within, the, within the local communities. Uh, I think that is one point which is uh, for us uh, yeah, very interesting and, and relevant uh, because, uh, as, as I already mentioned, uh, we see um, a, a strong focus on stakeholder engagement and community-led community local development uh, within this development of uh, bio-based business models. And we see that this is a process where, let's say, not only the private actors and the um, and the directly involved um, um, yeah, actors should be involved, but it's really um, a community effort. It brings uh, in, uh, yeah, added value to the community in general, and therefore also a, a wide range of uh, stakeholder groups should be involved uh, in this uh, activity. Uh, furthermore, um, yeah, environmental sustainability, I think it's something we also have developed a tool to actually assess a sustainability let's say, performance or evaluation of uh, bio-based business models, um, which uh, should be, um, yeah, should be focused on uh, if we are developing uh, business models in, in the different regions. So how much are they fitting actually to the local circumstances and how much uh, is uh, there some kind of, let's say, infrastructure already there, uh, which can be used and um, it's really having an, a positive impact to, to the environment and also social um, uh, aspects in, in, in the communities. Uh, very quickly, I think the most of you have heard about community-led local development, so I don't want to get into this uh, into too much of details, but uh, yeah, it, it's really uh, focusing on the integration of different stakeholder groups, as I have mentioned already, and also uh, establishing regional platforms. I think that's also one of our um, objectives within our projects, really to, to involve a wide range of different groups. Um, and um, yeah, and bioeconomy is embedded in the, the different um, yeah, priorities of the uh, European uh, Agricultural Fund for Rural Development. And I mean, so you can see the topics here in, in the figure. Uh, I don't want to go into detail and, at this one, but of course it's linking the different, uh, let's say policy levels, EU, national and also regional development uh, strategies and, and roadmaps, uh, which we have also uh, developed within our projects, for example. Um, yeah, maybe coming a bit more to um, maybe stakeholder engagement and uh, the experiences which we actually made within our projects. And I think one one point uh, I want to mention um, is that uh, we have the feeling that awareness raising uh, is still or pl it plays still a critical role. Um, uh, and for for involving actually uh, stakeholder feedback to increase stakeholder uh, awareness. Um, 
innovative formats um, are um, yeah, suitable and should be more and more implemented, uh, for example, living labs. But there can be there are a number of different um, formats. We have also used pop-up stores where we, for example, show really in a, in a local setting um, uh, bio-based uh, products uh, and uh, people can really go there and touch it and uh, smell it and whatever. Yeah, uh, So have a very low-key access to uh, what is actually what are actually the products and the results of, of these uh, bio-based um, uh, solutions. Then uh, one aspect uh, I, I want to mention is uh, capacity, capacity building and also uh, knowledge exchange activities should really be integrated in rural development policies. Um, I think uh, also for these kind of activities, uh, sufficient dedicated funding uh, is necessary, especially if um, a continuous engagement uh, should be supported, uh, because it's really difficult uh, to yeah incorporate this kind of um, activities within a let's say the household budget of a of a regional community. Um, furthermore, regional clusters, uh, local action groups, and I've heard some of them are already here, or some representatives are already already here, uh, should be really encouraged to contribute uh, to discussing. Uh, bio-based business models, but also some kind of uh, bioeconomy development strategies, roadmaps, which are developed with, within the, the communities. Uh, I think to really um, yeah, to involve a, a diverse group of uh, stakeholder um, actors, I think is essential really also to maybe use it for some kind of uh, let's say, image building within the local communities. I mean, we have also heard or we have read in the in the uh, in the chat, uh, which uh, was in the in the plenum section, that uh, yeah, regional communities are also looking for some kind of um, yeah, cooperative thinking and um, engaging within uh, and building something uh, like a let's say a core um, message uh, within their communities. And I think that can also help to to develop some kind of future vision. But I think it's necessary really to to in include uh, yeah diverse groups. Um, and then maybe one other point uh, we noticed is also um, entrepreneurs, I think, should be supported by really user-centric product development uh, and also yeah, be enabled to, to consider local uh, limits within their uh, business model development. I mean, what we are doing is really to um, support uh, local entrepreneurs um, uh, with market analysis and uh, developing business models uh, for their, let's say, business ideas. Um, and what we um, are yeah, imp implementing in b rural, but also in the scale up project, which is still running, is uh, really to involve, let's say, uh, diverse groups of stakeholders within this uh, business development um, uh, yeah, business development uh, and really have um, yeah continuous uh, let's say meetings and chats between the entrepreneurs and also uh, different other groups uh, uh, to yeah to to develop the idea for uh, to increase awareness and also maybe also to um, yeah focus on or bring in some kind of um, ecological limits uh, within the community. And this uh, my my last slide. Um, um, maybe just to highlight a little bit, uh, yeah, the first point is what I've already mentioned before. I think it's really um, important uh, to address within the discourse uh, the benefits which are actually related to the uh, bioeconomy developments and the, the, the business uh, possibilities, but as uh, as well also look into uh, potential risks uh, for regional developments. Uh, then uh, one aspect, um, you might have heard of the stakeholder engagement and participant, participation ladder approach, which is uh, yeah, focusing on different types of uh, or different formats of stakeholder engagement. And uh, I think for uh, all the different um, activities and all the for all the different uh, stakeholder engagement, I think it, the, the right format should be should be selected. So um, I mean, for some uh, kind of information, it's it's fine to have a let's say um, 
um, yeah, one one direction communication, which was mean education and information. It has to bring uh, some kind of messages uh, to maybe also to a larger group of people. And then uh, I think it's it's good to move more and more to co-production of knowledge and to have a very close um, cooperation with, with some groups, maybe in smaller meetings, very focused meetings, uh, where really um, some kind of decisions in the best case also are taken together. Um, then one kind of challenge we actually experienced in our projects, and I'm sure uh, there are a number of other um, uh, people in the room who have made the same experience. Of course, uh, we are uh, very much uh, focusing on involvement of a marginalized group or also, like we say, unusual suspects. So um, uh, actors which are normally not involved in the discussions and maybe are not the, the ones which you have your networks already with. Um, and I think there are a lot of challenges to bring this uh, in, in the discussions. Uh, we have found out uh, that we really need different formats for bringing in the, let's say, yeah, unusual suspects. So it's... Um, we made good experiences, for example, with really with bilateral meetings, with going to them, with uh, having very close contact uh, in a bilateral uh, way um, and uh, involving them in a yeah very focused uh, matter, let's say. Um, and the last point I wanted to mention is, um, yeah, that I think it's also very important, uh, especially also within this kind of projects, uh, but also within the, yeah, uh, local discussions really to focus on uh, the local priorities um, and the local, let's say, policy discussions and the um, and also to take into consideration that these discussions are dynamic. I mean, what we see in our projects, they're running whatever three, four years. And of course, uh, some kind of uh, political discussions are also changing during this period. And I think it's important really to um, to adjust to these uh, uh, local, maybe sometimes also narratives and framings uh, to bring people on board and um, and uh, yeah, to, to involve them in the discussions and uh, to make them their project more or less. <laughs> so this is very in a very short way, just a summary of our experiences. And I think we have more possibilities to discuss this in, in the next hour. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Jenny. Uh, I take keywords, uh, capacity building, engagement, partnership, social economy, entrepreneurship, engaging with unusual suspects. So plenty of foods for thought. Uh, please grab some of these ideas because I want uh, then I will be asking you which ones we, we will be discussing and, and, and dig deeper uh, afterwards. Huh? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jenny. We have a second uh, stakeholder. We have another project as well dealing with bioeconomy. Um, and here, let me say the name right. Um, pa, 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 pa. Leonidas uh, from uh, from I think Q Plan International. Uh, Correct. Talking about uh, his experience uh, with uh, another horizon called mainstream bio, which is about main, I think understand correctly mainstreaming bioeconomy as well, working with with local actors. So Leonidas, the the floor is yours, and I think you can share your presentation. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Uh, thank you for uh, this policy lab and thank you for uh, inviting us here to um, share our experiences uh, through uh, mainstream uh, bio project. So um, let me start uh, saying that um, my name is uh, Leonidas Parodos. Uh, I'm a senior project manager in Cuplan International, uh, an innovation consulting company based in uh, Thessaloniki, Greece with uh, more than 20 years of experience in uh, European projects. And um, what I would like to say is that um, we are the coordinators of a mainstream bio project, the Horizon Europe World project, which actually it's um, about mainstreaming um, the um, mainstreaming uh, small scale bio-based solutions, uh, contributing to robots, bringing small scale bio-based solutions into the mainstream across uh, rural Europe. So how are we trying to achieve that? So uh, we establish um, regional multi-actor structures for uh, demand-driven innovation and deliver a combination of innovation support services, uh, decision support system, and several practical uh, digital tools. So it's an ongoing project. Some of uh, the most uh, significant outcomes uh, so far are our uh, seven multi-actor innovation platforms, 
in uh, targeted rural areas in which more than uh, 100 of uh, key regional stakeholders have been engaged so far, 35% uh, of them uh, being uh, women. To uh, attract them uh, in the very beginning of the project and throughout the project duration, we uh, first leverage uh, existing uh, agricultural knowledge and innovation systems of our partners. And uh, we uh, employed uh, several targeted activities such, uh, such as uh, regional um, awareness raising and uh, educational uh, campaigns. Uh, we also uh, offer, as I said before, tailored uh, innovation support through technical and business services to um, promising uh, cases which were identified through uh, regional uh, open calls. So far, we have concluded the first round and in, uh, we are in the period of uh, second round. So for the first round, we had 36 unique applications and the cases requested more than 100 services from our portfolio. And in order to better adapt our portfolio, our service portfolio to the needs of the local stakeholders, we organized uh, regional co-creation workshops and conducted detailed market research in the focal rural areas in order to be sure that our uh, services will be um, adapted to the stakeholders' needs. Finally, we have developed a, a practical digital toolkit to facilitate um, the development of uh, bioeconomy in one place. We have included a catalog of small-scale bio-based technologies, business models, and social innovations, a collection of best practices for improved nutrient recycling, a decision support system which matches uh, available biomass and waste streams with small-scale uh, bio-based technologies, business models, and social innovations, a bioeconomy repository, very rich one, with uh, more than 500 bioeconomy resources, a tool library, and a bioforum. And uh, in order to better engage uh, our users, uh, we organized regional uh, capacity building workshops to provide coaching uh, to uh, farmers, uh, biomass producers, and uh, uh, various uh, local actors. Um, we have already I have some um, policy insights from uh, from our uh, project. So the key findings of uh, of mainstream bio on the current development of uh, bioeconomy across uh, the various targeted rural areas and the development of uh, bio-based solutions uh, are more or less uh, summarized in these two graphs. So first of all, as you can see on uh, your left uh, graph, the majority of uh, of the stakeholders. Uh, highlighted the need of uh, stable financial support, highlighted the need of, uh, avail the, of the availability of resources in terms of uh, agricultural feedstocks and uh, a supportive uh, regulatory framework as the most uh, important uh, enabling factors of, uh, for bioeconomy development in their specific uh, rural areas. Other factors uh, such as uh, technological development, uh, the existence of demonstration sites to educate farmers, and effective networking to build partnerships, demonstrate bio-based solutions and find customers uh, appear to be a bit uh, more uh, less significant. On the other side, the highest rated barriers to the development of bioeconomy in our rural regions were found to be uh, the high costs, the, the lack of uh, social acceptance and the unsupportive uh, regulatory framework. The majority of the participants highlighted the need for more effective communication with consumers to build trust and acceptance for bio-based products and solutions. Um, in addition, a strong emphasis uh, was given by uh, our stakeholders to the need for investments for bioeconomy development, particularly, particularly in the areas of research and policy, as can be seen uh, also on this graph. More uh, specifically, there is high need for uh, additional research and inv investments to exploit the advantages of uh, bio-based solutions, biofuels, bio-based materials, and bio-based products in general. Uh, what's more, um, further investments needed in the relatively new technologies of bioplastics and uh, biorefining. And uh, moreover, some additional investments on uh, policy support in the fields of public-private partnerships, SMEs financing, and bio-based standards and regulations are also highly recommended by our stakeholders. Um, in each of um, mainstream bio-targeted countries and uh, in each of uh, our focal uh, rural areas, the policy environment for the development of uh, small-scale bio-based solutions is, of course, uh, different. 
However, uh, if the existing uh, specificities are uh, left aside, it can be concluded that um, the development of uh, biosolutions could be improved by introducing uh, some uh, or hopefully all of uh, the, pol the following policy in initiatives, um, staying with uh, some uh, more uh, important to our uh, knowledge, it's, uh, unblocking political in initiatives, extending financial uh, incentives and uh, direct financial support, uh, extending education and outreach to interested stakeholders, uh, raising awareness uh, by solving uh, all the benefits of bio-based applications. And of course, there are uh, some many more. I will not go uh, through one by one. So uh, finally, um, our stakeholders uh, highlighted a uh, specific policy and uh, governance barriers uh, that may cause problems to the uptake of uh, bio-based solutions in bioeconomy development in the focal regions. So uh, it can be seen from this table that there are several common barriers in some of the countries. And as you can see, uh, for example, is the lack of uh, cooperation among key players of uh, the value chain, which is common in uh, Bulgaria and Spain. Uh, the lack of uh, targeted policy incentives, which is in common, uh, which is common in um, Denmark, Ireland, and Sweden. Um, the lack of uh, stable regulation, which is in the Netherlands, Poland, and Spain. And uh, these barriers, uh, and uh, of course, uh, you can see some many more, are uh, also uh, exist both in uh, country and regions with dedicated bioeconomy strategies, but also in those that do not have uh, yet such strategies because uh, some of, uh, of the countries and uh, they don't have yet uh, dedicated bioeconomy strategies. So um, that's all from uh, from my side.